Welcome, welcome, welcome to our tutorial today. Karen Frankel is here to help you all get drawing and explain things to you to help you on your drawing journey. Are clouds shapes or forms? And why do we need to know? I was looking at clouds that are similar to this. I must thank Unsplash com for all of the photographs that you are going to see today um, when we look at clouds the the image that comes to mind is you know they've all got a bottom a flat bottom I don't know if you've you've realized that and you know we draw these childish clouds often um, even if you're drawing you know really nice beautifully drawn clouds in the sky and we're doing them all softly and they're um, in amongst the wind um, you don't really draw wind but we have this feeling often or I do when I'm looking at um, at clouds when I'm painting clouds when I'm drawing clouds I have this feeling of them being quite flat um, I don't actually analyze it too much until that one day when I was looking at this clouds and I had this aha moment so I think of these clouds as a as a two-dimensional shape and then you've got you know the blue sky behind the clouds and they show up like that if you didn't know that clouds were flat on the bottom have a look next time you see clouds um, they all sit on a layer like that obviously above you so very often they have this flattish um, form the aha moment that I had looking at these clouds was, Karen, they're not two-dimensional. Like nothing else in the world, nothing is two-dimensional in the world. So even though we call this piece of paper two-dimensional because it's got height and it's got width, the actual depth of this paper is that fraction of a millimeter there everything's got three dimensions we talk about our page the page surface has only got two dimensions as we look at it and as we draw on it but the clouds up in the sky have actually got three dimensions they've got depth as well now there's a little bit of a conundrum when it comes to drawing and that is we look at this 3d world as if it's 2D, you know that I often get you to go, okay, let's measure it as if it's two-dimensional. But we do that so that we can draw it on this two-dimensional paper. That's why we look at it as 2D. But we want to make it look 3D. So we've got this whole complicated story going on. So that's what I want to simplify today. You've heard me say many, many times that to show something has got three dimensions you put some shading on it because only three dimensional objects subjects have and can have sh shadow on it so how do we depict these how do we depict these clouds and how do we form them why what was this this um breakthrough moment that i had and you can see it quite clearly on the clouds in this picture. The breakthrough moment was looking at clouds that have that had a heavy rain, heavy water-filled bottom. A water-filled bottom. And the bottom of the cloud was actually a box. So looking up at the clouds, I can see the side of the cloud but I can see the underside of the cloud as well so this was my aha moment wait for it it is coming and then the fluff was on top so what I was actually seeing and what we can see the underside of the cloud that rain dark there was this section it was the underneath of the cloud right The side of the cloud, so the box was full of rain. And as it went higher into the, 
the fluff of the cloud, for want of a better word, then it got lighter and lighter to nothing. So that the basic shape of this cloud was actually three-dimensional. It wasn't this two-dimensional image that I've always thought of in my head. And um, perhaps we don't give that much thought to clouds. But can you see how that works? Seeing the underside of clouds. And in fact, the, in the same way as perspective works for things that are below us, we can have clouds that are behind, right? And we will see the underside of those clouds as well. Now, we might not see the side that I'm drawing here. We might just see the underside and the side side. You can see here, as I put this one behind, now you can see what's happening with those three dimensions. I knew about that when it came to drawing boxes and drawing um, balls and things like that. Um, but it was a good example of how we can see things that are oddly shaped and we still have to come up with a form that helps us to draw them. Okay, so let's get to these two words, shape and form. Shape refers to a two-dimensional shape. That that I've just drawn on the page, that we would call a circle. It only has two dimensions to it. So it's got the height I was talking about and it's got the width. It hasn't got depth. And you know as a drawer we need to give it depth. If we look at this ball, as it's coming to you through the screen, through the camera, unless it's actually in your hand, you can see that as a circle as well. However, you can see some shadow on it and you know from your own experience and from me telling you over and over again that that is how we get the three-dimensional nature of what we are drawing and the word form applies to the three-dimensional the three-dimensional nature of things so that circle was a shape this circle is still a shape, but we are creating the illusion of form by putting shadow on. And you know that is a job for you to do. So how is that helpful when we want to draw other things? So not everything comes in such simple forms as a sphere circle or as a box. When we've got a rectangle that is a shape, that rectangle can be a square and we know as drawers, I hope that you know, we can pop some, uh, trying to show the shape of this, this box to you, we can pop some drawings of the sides on there to indicate to the viewer that this has three dimensions. It's got a top, um, it's got a width, it's got height, and it's got this which is depth. And of course that becomes an even better box if we pop some shadow on it. Okay, how does that help us when we are looking at other odd shaped things? And I've got a couple of things here. So, for example, a plug. When you look at, when you're observing what you want to draw, it's all very well to measure your two dimensions, to look for those two dimensional shapes of tone, so what shape is this tone? What shape is that tone? That is part of 
the, the observation, but we also need to have an understanding of the three-dimensional form of what we are looking at so that we can draw them more successfully. So that even if we haven't got that perfect lighting to show us those shadows, we have some understanding of what's going on with those um, uh, with the form, how the shapes that we see fit in on the form. And so here we come to a slightly more complicated form. It's got a box sort of shape on that side, but it's rounded on that side. It's circular there when you look at a bird's eye view. It's got a funny shape there it's it's sort of square uh, when you look at it from an odd angle that is really quite weird we can see we've got a sort of a shape there as i'm going around so how are we going to understand that so that we can draw it more accurately and if you understand how form works then you can translate these two-dimensional shapes that you're measuring into three-dimensional form. And it's a matter of putting your, uh, your standard three-dimensional forms together. So what you have to work out is, depending on how you're looking at this, right, you can practice, for example, drawing a cylinder, you know that cylinders are based on circles. So if I'm looking at this and it's turned, can you see I'm turning it to an ellipse? I am breaking down this complicated shape into more understandable, simple forms. So the shape is ellipse, but the form is a cylinder, okay? And so I've got some lines there and I've got another ellipse there and I've drawn effectively a three-dimensional form. I've given the illusion of a three-dimensional form there. So I've translated that onto there. Now what about this thing here? If I was looking at it at that angle, I would be able to see that that goes all the way down and that stops there. And under here, I could fit a cube in. So uh, it depends on your perspective. That's a different word. Uh, it's the same word, but a different meaning in that it depends on how you are looking at something in particular as to how you work it out. So actually that might be more interesting to translate on our page. So if I'm now thinking of this as a cube, right, I am going to draw a separate cube and I'm going to go, that cube does that and it goes down. Uh, I'm not looking at the side, so I'm not looking at both dimensions that would take it one level up I'm just looking at the flat there so I can see it going back slightly I can see that and this is about foreshortening the distance from there to there from my view I know you can't I'll turn it around so that you can see what I'm looking at can you see how short it is from there to there so it's very short. So if I were to finish that cube, I would just draw a cube like that. But that is not the same as this. I've got to somehow combine that with that. Okay, so this is where a little bit of thinking comes in, but slowly, step by step. So I've drawn that part, which is my circle here and that part's going a bit lower now I can see that the back of my object is coming out there so I'm drawing this over that and it's doing that this front part is actually 
at the same level there. Can you see that it's, it's I'm tilting it again? Uh, that is the same level as where this round started. And this here is all still round. Now, because I know that this is elliptical, right? I can put those little ellipses in there to show that round there. But on this side, I can make that flat. Can you see how I've combined that and that, but I've, this side has carried on being the column, and this side has carried on being the square. So that comes from an understanding of the form, not from the shape. Yes, you can see it from the shape. If you can just see this shape here, if you can observe your shapes very, very well without your head interfering, then you'd be able to see just that shape and be able to draw it. Um, if I want to put this on, that is now a funny sort of shape underneath. It's half square and it's half round. It does something like that. So I have now put a form on to this object. And in fact, this piece here has actually got a thickness to it as well, which I could give slightly like that. So that's also got height. It's a tiny little height. It's very, very thin, that bit. And it's got, uh, sorry, that's got depth, that's got height, even though it's tiny, and that's got uh, width there as well. That was my two-dimensional shape. And that was my two-dimensional shape starting point there but that got cut off because of the three-dimensional form so if we look at this dog we can say the neck is a cylinder maybe if we understand it as a cylinder the body underneath could be that's the side there and that's the front so it's a bit like a cheese wedge can you see what I'm talking about actually let's make that a triangle on the one side and that's the front so it is a little bit like a cheese wedge going up with a cylinder on top uh, and maybe a cheese wedge for the for the head. Now we can't see on top of his head, right? We can see a little bit underneath. So if we put a little bit of the underneath of his head, so underneath his chin, we can color in that wedge right and the front of his body is this wedge here can you see how i've transformed the drawing the photograph into a simple three-dimensional form or a number of three-dimensional forms that fit together we could take each of these legs if we wanted to complicate it more we could take each of these legs and turn them into cylinders And that would be simplifying the form of the dog into smaller um, forms. If you are looking straight at binoculars, so obviously there's somebody holding up the binoculars, all you would see is two circles staring at you. So that could be the binoculars you were looking at because you are looking straight down at them. So that might be how we would draw binoculars if we were looking straight at them 
we would we can't really see the form of the binoculars when we look at that photograph but if we look at that photograph now we can see that the form the three-dimensional nature of those binoculars is two cylinders so if we can understand that we can draw two cylinders with our ellipses right now those ones i've made too circular so i'm going to adjust my ellipse a little bit the bit in between from the angle that this photograph is taken that is actually a box that's on its side so you can see that's the top of the box and then we can see the inside of the box so if i were drawing that separately i could see the top of the box and and it curves round okay but I, then i can see the inside of the box there but it is based on a box and the cylinder hides the sides yeah so because the box is is um curved like that um it it gets attached to the cylinder so it's not a straight on box like that but it um it is basically if we understand it understand the 3d form we can see that it is a box that comes down and we can put it in there and understand that there's a top to the box that's the top i know i haven't put the knobs and all of those sorts of things in and this is the inside of the of that box of the three-dimensional form so yes we can absolutely understand these as two-dimensional shapes so that shape is like that because we're translating our three-dimensional world into two dimensions with our with our measuring it very much helps to explain to your head that's trying to interfere that these are three-dimensional forms and it helps us to put in the form or put in the shading put in whatever we need to then give the illusion of three dimensions so now i'm observing my shapes of tone and doing all of those things that i tell you to do i i'm not drawing these very carefully yes i know that the, there's a beautiful light edge there so everything that you come up with has got a set of shapes that you can put together to change it to a three-dimensional form if you understand how these shapes that you're putting down the two-dimensional shape becomes part of that three-dimensional form that will help you to change your work, your two-dimensional cartoony shapes into three-dimensional form. So there we've got a two-dimensional, I should have done it the other way around, two-dimensional animal and I've there I've changed it to a three-dimensional animal. And if I want to put ears on, you know, that's a triangular ear there, but my ear here might be a cone. Now, I've put that cone on as a simple shape to enhance its looking like an ear. I can actually give it some shading as well. Simplify it for yourself. So break it down into simple forms that you understand so the the side of the body can be 
a square. Depending on where you're looking at it, it could be, so that one I could see the back of it, this one I'm now showing you the front of it. But these legs are still only two-dimensional, how are we going to change them? So that now becomes the front. Or, as I said before, these could be cylinders instead of blocks. As long as whatever you're putting down indicates a three-dimensional form. So it's got square front legs and he's got round back legs. How about that? You can just try, you know, do a two-dimensional um, sketch do that and then see if you can turn this into something three dimensions by putting the other dimensions on and putting some shading in. So thank you so much for joining me once again. Karen Frankel signing out for another week. Have a wonderful week. Get drawing. Bye bye.